Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dan selamat pagi So today uh, I would like to share with you Our first class on mobile robotics So for the first part We want to have the bird eye view Or we want to have the big picture What is mobile robotics So here we will go through all parts of mobile robotics and I will explain just the concept on each of mobile robotics parts. However, in the next class and the class after this, we will go through each one of these parts that I have, that I have explained as in the concept. The notes that I use to make here are based on Cyrus Tachnis, okay? Cyrus Tashnis and my name is Dr. Ubaida bin Shamsuddin and you can go to my email ubaida at utation.edu.my Okay, what is a mobile robot? We know there is an industrial robot. So, what is the difference between these two? Industrial robot is a robot that cannot move. example of an industrial robot, but example of a mini industrial robot. So, industrial robot doesn't have a wheel on the below here, so the robot cannot move. The robot can only work in the area around the robot itself, which means all the environment around the industrial robot is the environment that we have built to be safe and the environment usually human cannot come in into the area where the robot is working. However, mobile robot, there will be people walking around the robot and then the obstacle always change. Sometimes there is a box here, sometimes there is no box and then the robot needs to move in area where the, the boxes are sometimes moving, sometimes we have dynamic obstacle which we have moving people around the robot. This is very difficult for robotics. Therefore, they have come up with a new mathematics which is mobile robots. Okay, in a mobile robot, we have a lot of different components to make sure that we can use the robot inside a uh, dynamic environment. So we need to have motor control, battery control, just to move this robot. And what most important, we need the robot to see the environment by using sensors. So we need sensors and also the robot needs to know where to go, like a GPS. So we need a GPS sensor. The robot needs to have an eye so the robot can see the obstacle and the robot can avoid any obstacle that it sees. So this is an example by Infineon, the types of chips that we may need to use on our mobile robot. And there are lots of things that we need to consider to build a mobile robot. This is for the component parts. The another most important part for the robot, not only the component, but what do you think? It is the software. The software is the brain for the robot. The software is where the robot can think and make decisions. So this is your robot. The robot is like your body, your hand, your, your legs, and everything is moved based on the brain. The brain controls everything. Okay, so we get information from the robot, we process the information and come up with a decision and then we send that decision to the robot to move. So the software is the brain of the robot. Okay. For autonomous, for autonomous mobile robot, one of the most important part for, for the autonomous, uh, for, for the mobile robot is the autonomous navigation. 
So we want to go specifically on the autonomous navigation only in this class. Okay, what is autonomous navigation? Autonomous navigation is moving from part A to B. Okay, so A is your current position, B is your goal, and the robot must move autonomously without human helping the robot to move from A to B. What are the challenges? So to move to point A to B, sometimes there will be a wall in front of the robot. Sometimes there will be people. Sometimes the road have hole. So all of this, the robot must avoid to make sure it can arrive to B. Okay. Without knowing this, all of this information, the robot can easily crash to the wall. So how to avoid this? We need some kind of software. So without the good software, the robot cannot move. For this software, the, the robot needs to know where he is, where I am right now. Am I near to A? Am I near to B? What type of software do I need to have so that I can know where I am right now? And then I need to know how far is the goal. So is it 3 meters from me? So how do I know that? I need some kind of GPS to make sure that I know where I need to go. Okay. And then if there is an obstacle, how can I avoid this? I cannot just move directly. Let's say you are using GPS and then there is uh, like a lake or tasset. The robot will go inside that lake. Right? So we need to avoid this kind of situation. So to do that, there is a software that we can use and we will learn in this class where there are, there are two parts the first part is simultaneous localization and mapping this software is used to know where am I after I get to know where am I next by using the map of the environment I know the map I know where is the wall and everything I need to do past planning I need to avoid the obstacles and move safely to the goal. So to, to find the path, I need to use path planning. So this part, where am I? This part is how to navigate safely after I know where am I. Okay, so let's go for the first part of the software, which is simultaneous localization and mapping. Let's say this is your robot. How can I know the robot, how far the robot have moved? I can use sensors like, right? Let's say I can use encoder sensor. So based on how many wheel, how many turns that the wheel have done, we will use the sensor to, to measure. Like if the robot have turned like two times, so I can know how far the robot have moved. And by using this information, by getting the speed of the data, I can know the speed of the wheel. And then I can know the speed of my robot. So V is the speed of the robot in meter per second. And then the second thing, I need to know the robot angle. Angle. Angular. So how can I know the robot angle change? By using sensor, initial measurement sensor, this sensor is used on drone and plane, aeroplane it's to get the change of uh, this one, pitch, roll, and yaw. So for our robot, we are moving on a flat environment. So we don't need to have the roll and pitch. We just need to have the yaw part. So by having the yaw part, and also the velocity, I can get how far the robot has moved. And then the next part, the robot need also need to know, need to see 
If I don't see, I, I am blind. I cannot see there is an obstacle in front of me. So how can I know what is in front of me? So for this, we can use a lot of different sensors like RGB, red, green, and blue camera. So by using this camera, we can get, we can see where is the obstacle. We can also use just 3D LiDAR without any color or 2D LiDAR. LiDAR is like using laser measuring everything in front of us. Okay. By using 2D LiDAR, I can see there is an obstacle here. So now I can get this information and collect it inside my robot. This is an example how can we use the LiDAR data to get my robot position and also to build a map of environment. So the green color is the laser measurement and the gray color is the area that the robot does not know, unknown area. And the white color is the robot have explore area. There is no obstacle, safe to move. And black color is the area that have obstacle. So here the robot needs to avoid. Now we can see the robot is moving and by using its eyes, it can collect information where there is an obstacle and where is the area without obstacles. Now, by using V Omega and the LiDAR scan data, I can actually get, I can actually measure where am I and I can also build a map of the environment. So this is an example of a map that we build by using LiDAR, V and Omega. So we can actually know correctly where is the robot location and we can actually build a good map. This is a map of MIT building. So look at that. The map is very beautiful. So by using the software simultaneous localization and mapping, I can actually get where I am I and I can know where is the obstacles. Now I have know all of this information. How can I move from A to B? So I need another software, which is Pass Planning. Pass Planning is a very heavy so, because it is very heavy, so we need to make it in two stages. First, the robot is not moving. I have the map. So the robot will measure from A to B. How can I go from A to B? First, I will make a global pass. Global pass, which means a long pass, like I'm going from uh, for 100 kilometers. So I need to make a pass for a long pass. So I just make it, make sure the road I move on, uh, make sure to go to on the highway and uh, everything. The next part, I need to move my robot. And at the same time, I need to avoid obstacle. So by doing this, I cannot use a global pass. Global pass will take like 10 seconds just to find a pass. So everything, every time there is a new obstacle come in front of my robot, oh, my robot needs to do measurement again. I need to wait 10 seconds until I can do, I can get the measurement. I cannot do it like this. Okay. Therefore, I need a local map. This local map will replan the robot navigation each time there is an obstacle very fast in real time, less than one second. So this is an example of a global map, global pass. So by using A star, the, the, the area is oh, becoming bigger, bigger, bigger. It's trying to find the nearest pass to this goal. Then I can get it. So this is my pass. So next, when I can get my global pass, you can see it takes a long time. 
next I have this global pass I will divide it into sub goals every one meter I will make another sub goal sub goal sub goal sub goal sub goal until I arrive at the goal now I use a local pass planning to plan from here to here this small map area can be planned in a very fast manner to do this by Professor Usama Khatib, he has built a technology which is called dual window pass planning. The robot will use like will uh, uh, will plan. Uh, I don't know. Will predict this all of this pass, and if one of the pass hit an obstacle, this pass will not be used. So it will only use the pass that is not colored. Uh, that is not uh, red color because there is an obstacle so like this one this pass is okay this one is okay this one we cannot use because there is an obstacle so we can see here it's like the predicted trajectory is always moving if there is an obstacle you will use other type of predicted trajectory and it will try to go back to the the main pass here and arrive at the goal location okay so that is an example of DWA and finally this is the whole robot robotic system okay we can see from this video here the robot is moving from here to here and we can see the paths that have been made and we can also see the map that have built by the robot to move from A to B okay let's see again the most interesting part is suddenly there is a person come in front of the robot. The robot see that person and try to avoid it. Okay, so this is an example of autonomous navigation for mobile robot. We can also use robot for different types of things such as firefighter robot. This is uh, one of the project for my PhD in Japan. So we have built large type of robot to move into petrochemical complex. Petrochemical complex is oil tank that can have an explosion as large as a uh, half kilometer. The big, the uh, the size of the fireball. Okay. Anything in that area will be burned or severely injured. So last time. The, the injuries have caused like 11 people were severely injured, very bad. So they don't want to use people in this type of area, they want to use robot. So to do that, first we need to build a map. So I build a map inside the petrochemical complex here. Okay. This is a petrochemical complex in Japan, which is not used anymore because there is a tsunami in this area <coughs> okay. now I show you the map with a uh, Google map so now we, you can actually see uh, how good is my map so actually you can see it is almost similar to the Google map And this is the demo of the robotic system. After three years, our firefighting robots robot. make it possible to extinguish large scale fires utilizing the world's first autonomous locomotion and linkage function to be used in places where firefighters cannot reach, such as a pyrochemical complex. So there is a host extension robot. The water shooting robot. <clears throat> Firefighters drive the firefighting robot system vehicle to a safe area near the fire scene. <coughs> Sorry. Firefighters deploy the robot from the vehicle and connect the cables and hoses. 
the vehicle becomes the control cabin of the firefighting robot. Sorry. The surveillance and reconnaissance robot is put into action. Based on the environmental information of the fire scene gathered by the robot, it automatically moves to an optimal water discharging area near the fire scene with the hoses connected with the water cannon robot and the hose extension robot. The water cannon robot is placed in the fire scene and the hose extension robot automatically lays the hose. Now, that is, uh, and then we have other examples. Uh, we can also I use the it. robot for uh, uh, the home reception. All right, I will return to the store. I think you can watch all of these videos. And uh, so, uh, this is some of the the, the application of the robot that we can use. Uh, I hope you enjoy our first class and I hope I can meet with you guys next week class inshallah. Okay that's all for this week. Uh, I will give the link of this video for you to see. Okay thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Bye.